There we go. All right. Um, Ellen, would you like to greet everyone this morning? Uh, you're muted. Sure. Good morning, everybody. It's great to have you here on this very rainy and icky day in, in, from Southern Illinois, at least. Um, we're thrilled to have Ryan and Cindy here with us today. ILA is such a pivotal part of the work we do. Um, we couldn't do a lot of what we do without their support and their input. So I will give the program back to Anna and let Cindy and Ryan have the floor. Okay. Well, I want to thank both Cindy and Ryan for joining us and agreeing to do this. I think um, ILA is, you know, as Ellen says, it pays, plays such a pivotal role throughout the entire state. And it also enhances people's personal lives too, uh, in that it gives you lots of chances to network with other librarians who are from all different sized libraries and all different parts of the state. Um, and I think it gives us uh, the opportunity to step up to the plate and contribute to the profession as well. It doesn't matter where you're at. Um, I think you know, I know when I first came down to uh, work at IHLS, I was, you know, just overwhelmed and in deep awe of all of the work that all of our library staff does and so with so little money and uh, sometimes against uh, great odds, but they do a phenomenal job. And I think that we need to share our knowledge and uh, make our stories heard as well. And I think ILA is a, a perfect venue to do that, as well as learning from others in the state too. And I am going to now turn it over. We have Cindy, Will Cindy Robinson, who is uh, the director of ILA. And we have Ryan Johnson, who is the director of the O'Fallon uh, Library, but he is also ILA president this year. Um, and I know when I first started working in Illinois libraries, I won't even mention how long ago it was, but I know that ILA was really struggling financially. And for a while, they were even wondering whether it was just going to fold its doors and go away. But over that time, um, it's become a very robust, worthy institution. And uh, one that I can't imagine if it wasn't there what we would do. So I'm gonna turn it over to Cindy and let you take over from there. All right, good morning, everybody. I'm just gonna get my slides up. There we go. Um, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I'm very happy to be here. Um, I have been executive director for seven months now, um, but I've been at ILA for uh, 23 years. Um, <laughs> so it's been a while. Um, I have the advantage of standing on the shoulders of Bob Doyle and Diane Foote, who uh, were my predecessors and who taught me so much. Um, so I'm very, very happy to be here today. Um, so I was looking at the slides this morning and um, I thought they were kind of like a mullet because I have like all the business in the front and then Ryan kind of has the party in the back. So I promise um, things will get better after we go through my slides, which are very, you know, text heavy and probably very boring. But I will send this to Anna so that uh, all of you can have all of the links that are in the the slides. Um, Cindy, Cindy yeah. I, I will say your slides are also much more professional. <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, maybe too professional. I need some GIFs in there or something. Um, so uh, obviously, we represent libraries and th those who de uh, depend on them. We are the largest, uh, third largest state association um, in the country. Uh, the first being Texas and the second being New York. So we're number three. Um, we also have the third largest conference in the country. Um, and uh, we have nearly 2,000 personal members, more than 500 institutional members of all types, uh, public, academic, school, special, 
trustees, students, we have a lot of library vendors that are members. Um, we are governed by an executive board and um, Ryan is here today and Esther is also here today. She, they are both on our board. Um, let's see if there's anyone else that I haven't noticed. Um, we have 16 members and two ex officio members and uh, that would be me and Greg McCormick from the State Library. Uh, we currently have a staff of five, but soon we will have a staff of six, oops, um, which is very exciting. We are bringing on um, a new position to manage iRead and uh, Becca Boland is uh, going to be our new manager for iRead. Uh, she'll start on March 6th. You may know Becca from her work um, and the Youth Services Forum. Uh, she currently is at the Skokie Public Library, but she has been at several other libraries um, in different capacities, uh, but often with a focus on um, youth and young adult services. And she has been on the iRead uh, conference, I'm sorry, iRead committee twice. So she knows a lot about iRead and we're very excited to have her on. Um, our strategic plan is uh, in place for one more year. Next year, uh, during Ryan's presidency, we will be uh, reviewing and updating our strategic plan. So that will be a big project. Um, and uh, one of the things that Ryan will talk about later is how members can get involved with committees. So I'll leave that to later. Um, some of the main things that we do are advocacy. Um, because we are a 501c3, we are able to do the legislative advocacy for the state. Um, we have two committees, uh, advocacy, which works on the message of uh, advocacy, and then public policy, which focuses on legislation. Um, and our public policy committee has representation from all parts of libraries. So we have a group of members that are appointed, but then we also have um, Ellen Poppet is our representative from Illinois Heartland. Um, Monica Harris is our uh, representative for Rails. Um, uh, Ann Craig from Carly is on the committee. So we have representation and oh, also Isle, we have uh, representation. So it's it's more than just ILA. It's it's really the entire Illinois uh, ecosystem. Um, we have two legislative events coming up in the next couple of weeks, next Wednesday and the following Monday. Um, and uh, if you go to our website under advocacy, you can get that information. You can sign up for the uh, the two events we have going on this year. Instead of doing um, local events, we are doing statewide events. Uh, one will be how to talk to your legislature, or your legislator, how to prepare for a meeting, um, how to you know get ready to have them come to the library or for you to go to their office. And then the second event will focus on our new leg uh, legislators. We have, uh, I think, 40-ish, and we're just going to really focus on them this year so that they know what libraries are all about. Uh, we have several publications, the reporter, the alert. If you're not already signed up, please go to ila.org and sign up so that you can get the updates. There will be a legislative update that you can read. Um, and then we have several publications as well. Um, so uh, some of the, the things that ILA does is it gives you the opportunity to be on a committee. Um, we, uh, I read summer reading program is our largest project of the year. Uh, in addition to Becca working on it, we have many uh, contracted people that work on it. And uh, I read is always working on three years at the same time. So we have, it's a large committee and um, they do a lot of work. <laughs> so we're very, very grateful for that. Um, ILA awards and scholarships, we have um, a very strong and robust awards program. And we have many scholarships that we really encourage you to apply for. We have uh, travel, um, travel 
scholarships for um, national conferences. We have uh, scholarships for reaching forward. We have scholarships for um, uh, continuing education. So definitely take a look at that part of the, the website. Uh, the Fund for Illinois Libraries allows libraries, uh, if libraries receive a check that has to be processed by a 501c3, um, ILA is kind of the pass through for that so that you can get your uh, your grant money usually. Um, and there's more information of that on the website as well. Um, uh, Lyra, I know many libraries are members of Lyra. Uh, if you are an ILA member, you are able to save money on your insurance. Um, and then of course, trustee resources, which is very close to my heart for the last 23 years. Um, I was the liaison to the trustee forum and um, I'm very committed to trustees. Too far. Um, so some of the benefits of institutional membership is you get discounts on a lot of things. Um, and, and it, again, Lyra Fund for Illinois Libraries, uh, you get a free iRead resource guide, which um, go, is available to any uh, institutional member. So if you haven't gotten yours yet, um, please contact us at ILA at ILA.org and uh, Tina or Sarah can help you get that right away. Uh, we also have um, a free posting for the job line. Every, every uh, institutional member gets a free posting. Uh, personal members, uh, same thing, many, many discounts. Um, but one of the things it also gives you is the opportunity to serve on a committee or perhaps run for the executive board. Um, there's a lot of opportunities to get involved, uh, working on the ILA reporter, um, conference committee is always a fun committee. Um, Ryan can tell you some more about that later. Um, and, oh, 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 gosh, don't let me be in charge of the slides. <laughs> All right. I went too far. Too late. I think you are in charge of the slides. I, I, I am. I, it's, <laughs> it's, I'm clearly not uh, um, ready for this. <laughs> so I don't want to get too caught up in all of the details, but I will, um, as I said, I'll give the slides to Anna and then she can share them with all the links. And if you have any questions at any point, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and our emails will be at the end. So I'm just going to stop talking and give it over to Ryan. Okay, thanks. You're still in charge of the slides, though. I am, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay, thanks, Cindy. And thanks, everyone, for being here today. Um, it is also rainy here, like it is further south. Um, so beautiful yesterday, though. And then, well, here we are today. But anyway, so I'm going to talk about um, my ILA experience. And first off, it has been quite... Um, an adventure. My first ILA conference, I believe, was in 2011. And I'd only been working in libraries a short time up to that point. And honestly, I couldn't, I couldn't see much farther than the next hold slip. I didn't really know what this profession had to offer, um, what opportunities were out there. But after going to that first conference, um, my eyes were really opened. Um, it exposed me to the potential of the profession, expanded my understanding of what is possible and energized me to pursue this as a career, not just as a job. Next slide, Cindy. Thanks. <clears throat> so in the years since that first um, ILA exposure, I have made many friends and expanded my professional network through things like Elevate and Directors University, um, serving on committees and so on. And many of us, we have strong professional ties in our geographic regions, but having people statewide that you can call or email, to pick their brains, get advice, to share advice, um, that's also tremendously helpful. And that's something I've, I've definitely been able to take advantage of um, here of late. So, you know, just like, just like in Middle Earth, the fellowship was not all from the Shire. We had people from Gondor and La Florian and Erebor and, and so on and so forth. And those additional 
perspectives and skill sets were obviously very helpful in the fight against Sauron. And we need those same types of diverse perspectives and skill sets to help us as we try to fight evil every day, be it through book bans or ebook pricing or database pricing, or, you know, local politics, whatever, whatever your particular flavor, flavor of evil uh, might be. Next slide, please. So this is um, a, a break from our Middle Earth imagery to show you the new logo for the upcoming uh, conference, which will be in Springfield this fall. Um, and we're really excited about this theme. I think it lends itself to all sorts of potential uh, breakout sessions. Um, you know, we can weave this in to our keynote speakers um, and just kind of the whole conference experience. I see the connect aspects as really connecting us to one another. Like I mentioned earlier, kind of building those bridges, connecting people um, with colleagues throughout the state. Cultivate uh, comes into play when we look at investing in people, investing in our libraries. We can cultivate growth opportunities for staff. We can cultivate meaningful services for our patrons and for our communities. And then lastly, we have collaborate. This can mean partnering with local schools, hospitals, um, businesses, social services, whatever the case may be to further enrich that library experience. Um, to help kind of break down those silos so that we're not all operating independently. For the betterment of our patrons, we can kind of tie together um, and, and collaborate more to lift, up, to lift up our mission and help fulfill those missions. And we are still um, obviously in the planning phases for this conference. Um, and Cindy mentioned earlier the, the program uh, or the conference uh, planning committee, that, that is fun as, as um, president-elect. That is something I get to be a part of uh, this year. My, my term as president starts July 1, so I'll be, I'll be president during this, this conference. But you know, just being in on the, on the planning stages, you know, forming the little subcommittees to you know, do, do all the hard work of, of thinking up ideas and working with ILA staff to make those ideas uh, come to fruition has been very, very uh, enriching, has been very, very fun to be a part of. Um, and I also do want to say that, you know, we'd love to have some IHLS librarians present at conference. So keep an eye out as we send out that call for proposals. Um, it's great to have, have people there. It's also great to have people there um, who are sharing their knowledge, sharing their success stories to help inspire others throughout the state. Next slide, please. Okay, well, back to Middle Earth. Um, lovely spring day in Middle Earth. Um, I do want to stress that ILA is more than just annual conference, though. Annual conference gets, you know, that's, that's the big deal, but there's a lot more to, to ILA than that. There's the upcoming Reaching Forward South Conference, which is gonna be right here in beautiful O'Fallon. So if you want to uh, take a look at that, you can find information online. It's gonna be on Friday, April 14th. This is a, you know, this is a much smaller conference than annual, but it's also targeted to smaller libraries, libraries further south and also frontline workers. So you know, there, there's something for everyone there, but it's really targeted to those frontline staff people who are the lifeblood of our of our organizations. There's also the new network series, an incredible webinar archive on the ILA website. There's the Ready Set Advocates modules. All of these resources can really be used like a self guided, um, self paced professional development curriculum. That's that's how rich this stuff is. Um, so if you're someone who's really busy, you don't have time to. Now to attend a webinar live or to go to a meeting when you when you can find time when you can carve out time or maybe even just when you have a specific need be it about book challenges or specific policies whatever you can go to the website find something that's already been discussed and harvest that information when you need it so we've got the picture of the shire up here um, because i want to put special emphasis on the small and rural libraries forum after all if uh, if the Shire had libraries, they would be small and they would be rural, like many of our libraries are. And this forum exists to elevate the voices 
of these smaller libraries to discuss special issues faced by, by those libraries, um, by their staff members, by their communities. Um, I highly encourage you to consider getting involved with the small and rural libraries forum. And may, maybe it's not you specifically, maybe it's a board member, maybe it's your number two or your number three person on staff, whomever might be appropriate, get involved. Um, I'm confident it will be well worth your time. And it serves as a great entry point to ILA if you're someone who hasn't been involved previously. <clears throat> Next slide, please. So I do stress that that small and rural libraries form because ILA is very much interested in diversity. And diversity can come in, tr in the traditional context of racial, ethnic, and cultural background. There's also geographic diversity and size diversity to consider. <clears throat> and I admit as a straight white guy, I am not diverse at all. Um, but in this very limited context, I do get to bring some diversity to the table in representing Southern libraries at the state level. Small, not only in, in population served, but also in uh, relative budget size. So, you know, much like Middle Earth here on the map, um, the traditional seats of power might be uh, Rivendell or Minas Tirith, but the people of Lake Town, the people of Bree, they, they are important too. And we need to make sure that all voices are heard on that level. And I'm even more excited um, that after my turn as president, which starts in July, that we're guaranteed to have another IHLS library represented as we have Ashley Stewart, who is on this call from the Caseyville Library and Amy Byers from Chatham Area Library District. They're running against each other this spring. So regardless of the turnout, we're gonna have another IHLS uh, person following me as president. And that's, that's very exciting. I, I really hope this, this can have a kind of a, a, a ripple effect to where we get more and more people downstate involved. And Cindy already mentioned that Esther is on the call, call today. And um, we're thrilled to have her on the executive board as well. All right, next slide, please. There we go. So I suspect there are a good number of directors on this Zoom call. Um, as directors, especially in small libraries, almost all of the professional development opportunities um, run through us, almost like a bottleneck. We don't have the travel or training budgets to send a lot of staff to things. We also maybe don't have the staff to, to physically send and still keep our doors open. I mean, that's a, that's a real challenge for some of us. So I would encourage you to find ways to share opportunities with your staff, um, with your team at large. Don't, don't be like Bilbo here hogging the spotlight. Invite some other hobbits up onto the stage with you. Um, maybe a board member can sit in on the trustee forum. Maybe a part-time circulation assistant can get involved with that small, small and rural libraries forum that I mentioned earlier. Maybe your youth services person can get involved with awards or nomination or uh, conference, whatever, whatever the case may be. But I encourage you to, to build that organizational capacity so that you don't have to carry that full load yourself um, as a library leader. We've been fortunate here in O'Fallon um, to do that to some degree. And it's great seeing my other team members get involved and flourish and grow with these opportunities and seeing them experience that same kind of spark that I experienced um, many years ago. All right, next slide. Thank you. Okay, so some final thoughts as we sail off to, into the sunset here. My involvement with ILA and, and my, also my involvement with, with IHLS, I serve on that executive board too. Um, both of those experiences have, have made me better at, at my day job. I feel more competent in board meetings. I'm a better, well, I hope I'm a better mentor and coach to my staff. I have a better grasp on the budget process, on FOIA, on Open Meetings Acts, all of those things. It's almost like cross-training um, to where when you, when you pivot away and you do something different, um, it kind of magically makes your, your day job easier as you strengthen yourself in these other capacities. Um, so I, I Again, I would just encourage you to, to look into the different ways you might get involved. There's lots of different opportunities out there. 
Um, and I think, I think not only we as individuals can benefit from that, but we as, as our libraries can benefit with that. And then as a, as a, as a profession on the whole, we, we all kind of benefit from that. All right, thank you for enjoying that trip through Mother Earth. That's my last slide. Do we have do we have questions? I'm sorry, I'm I'm struggling here. Yeah, we we do have a few questions here. Um, someone uh, commented, I appreciate the amount of nerd language in your part of the presentation, Ryan. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I loved Anytime. it too. I thought it was very nice. And uh, I, I see Cindy sent so many really helpful um, links in the chat that, uh, you know, people can access so many wonderful resources. Um, and I, I really appreciate you uh, pointing out, Ryan, how much you've grown professionally um, through your association with ILA. Um, I think that that's so true and it's, it is state level. And I think we are fortunate in that, as Cindy pointed out, we are one of the larger state library associations and it's like we're a very library rich state whether we realize mm -hmm. it or not and we have a, a robust history of services to people we have the delivery service from top to bottom and I think those things that unite us make us stronger and I think ILA is one of those key points that unite us and make us stronger as a state um, and helping us deliver things um, to our to the end user, our members, um, and I think uh, just hearing what other people are doing, it's always a great place to, you know, to steal. I mean, borrow ideas for <laughs> programs and services, and you know, I I just think of all of the wonderful programs I've attended over the years. Um, and uh, I have valued my membership at ILA. And, you know, I've gone to Reaching Forward North and Reaching Forward South, and I've gone to lots of conferences. And I've attended Elevate. And, you know, whenever, you know, I've also had a long interest in uh, trustees and uh, have always tried to go to the trustee day uh, events at the conferences. And uh, I recommend that anyone, um, you know, send your, connect your trustees with uh, the trustee forum. And it's not just people um, from Chicago. I know mm -hmm. Tom Stagg, who is from uh, the area where I grew up in, uh, which is, you know, he's, I think he's from Bartonville. Bartonville. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Alpha Park Library. And he, um, He's very active, and I know there have been other people, you know, from Bloomington, and I would like to see more people from, you know, Southern Illinois. I mean, I, I'm trying to think of who I can get from Metropolis to, <laughs> you know, we have some good board members uh, from the from the far south, and I would love to see them, you know, uh, get involved with uh, ILA Trustee Forum. Um, I know when I've gone and visited um, trustees throughout the state, they, you know, they'll say, well, I want someone who speaks about what it's like to be a trustee down here or over here or around here, or, you know, and it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, you have some unique issues, but there are lots of common issues, too. And I think it's the same thing for all of us, too. We all have a lot of common issues, regardless of our size or our geographic location. And I think ILA gives us a forum to, to discuss those things. So I know um, I see a lot of people who have uh, connections to ILA. Uh, I don't know if anyone would like to unmute themselves and you know talk about what they have gained from being a member of ILA. Now's your chance, or you can put it in the chat. I see El Esther, yes. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to do a little advertising. Um, as 
stated earlier, I'm on the executive board. This is my first time. I've been on committees before, and so now I'm kind of seeing both sides of the process. Um, but I was excited to be named as the um, board liaison for the Small and Rural Library Forum. And for many, you may not recognize that because it's fairly new. It kind of was started and kind of going and then COVID hit. And so it really hasn't developed much. So it's a real good chance. It's focusing on this area a lot um, with all of our rural and small libraries. And, you know, they're throughout the state, but we have probably more of them. Um, and so it's it, if it's something you're interested in, it, you know, our our goal as the forum is to to not be a, a time consuming thing because we know the small libraries don't have a lot of time to go do things. So, you know, we're looking at, you know, our informationals here and there, um, a listserv to put out information that you don't have time to keep up with, you know, and so it's it's good to have that input of what what we're looking needing to keep the information going on and and just need members to kind of get it off the ground. Yes. Thank you, Esther. I think that's important. I um, have been involved with the, the Rural and Small Libraries Forum um, for a while. And it, it is hard to get it going. And I know that there's so many uh, people out there who were having interest in this. And um, as a matter of fact, I, I was just, I had told Cindy in the, as we were chatting before the program started, I'm going to go to a conference on um, rural affairs um, next week. And I'm going to definitely be promoting libraries to everyone who will listen to me and about how important libraries are to rural communities and how we play a big part in that and how we could even be bigger players if we had the funding and resources and respect <laughs> that we deserve. So, you know, I think um, whatever we do together, you know, I, I know even if you can't attend all the meetings, if you can be part of that forum and just say, you know, when we do lobbying, you know, or whatever, ILA can do for us, we can show them the numbers. You can say, you know, these are, we have this many people who are involved and who, um, you know, want to move rural libraries ahead in, in their mission. So, and let's see, Ellen has requested that Cindy uh, talk about the full scope of iRead programs. I would be happy to talk about iRead. I uh, just put a a link in there. Um, so I read is 42 years old this year. Um, it is a summer reading program. And uh, in addition to Illinois, we also have 10 other states that have signed on to uh, use I read. And we also provide the summer reading program for Department of Defense libraries. So the libraries on bases all around the world. Um, and we also have some libraries in uh, New Zealand that use our summer reading program. Like they're using it now because it's summer there. Um, so, uh, so tiny little ILA has this huge global reach uh, in I in I read. Um, the uh, the there are a lot of advantages of I read. We don't require you to sign on for anything more than just getting the resource guide if that's all you want. Um, and you can use all of that material during the summer reading program. You can use it afterwards. You can use uh, the clip art and make your own t-shirts as long as you're not, you know, someone's not doing it commercially. Uh, so, so we really give a lot of power to the libraries and what they can do. Um, and the resource guide is, you know, it's huge. It's like a brick if it's printed, <laughs> which we're moving away from because it is so big um, with tons of ideas of, of what you can do over the summer. Um, uh, as I said, we are always working on three years. So we have uh, we have this year is find your voice, and um, 
I am never good at remembering themes, <laughs> so I have to. It was off off the beaten path last year. Off the beaten path, and then um, next year is oh, oh there it is. Um, next year will be read, renew, repeat. And then for 2025, we will have, we don't have the, uh, we haven't announced the theme yet, but it will be focused on games and puzzles. Um, so there's kind of a different theme every year. Uh, find your voice can mean a lot of things. So it could be singing, it could be, you know, um, painting, just however you might express your feelings. So, um, so yeah, I read is a very big and very important part of the of uh, ILA. Um, Thanks, Cindy. Yeah, thank you. Um, Ryan, I have always wanted to know about the secret life of the ILA president. <laughs> how much? How much of your life uh, this year is is involved in ILA? Um, so this year, as president elect. Um, I mean, I, I want to say it's a huge time commitment. I understand next year is going to be a little bit more of a, of a time commitment, but Cindy and the staff do a great job at kind of leading you along. So, I, I mean, to some extent, there's kind of like uh, guardrails. Um, so you can't, you can't get into the gutter too much because someone's going to help keep you on track. I, I do really appreciate the, um, I guess maybe the, the, the stickiness of it. So we have weekly communications with Cindy um, so that the president elect, the current president and the immediate past president all have, you know, these touch based sessions to keep everyone informed and engaged and on the same page. Um, it's not like some things where maybe you get tapped on the shoulder to do something and just kind of left alone to figure it out on your on your own. There's a there's a very strong teamwork component to it. Now, do you get to uh, push your agenda? I mean, do you say, I think your library should really focus on blank this year? I mean, do you have that kind of power or? Um, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, even if I did, I don't, I don't think I would use it that way because the way ILA is structured, we have all of these different committees. Like Cindy mentioned the Advocacy Committee, Public Policy Committee. Um, those have chairs and vice chairs and, and they those committees work to kind of figure out what their um i guess areas of focus are going to be and of course they get input from staff you know if, if they want the president's opinion on something i'm sure we can provide it um all of those committees also have board and liaisons so again it's it's, it's really it's really a, a whole team uh ecosystem not just one person or two people calling the shots Okay, so you evidently don't get a crown and scepter with this role. Uh, no, we could probably get <laughs> a Burger King crown or something like that. <laughs> yeah, well, it sounds like fun in, in a lot of ways. It sounds like a lot of work, but it also sounds very rewarding. And I'm sure you forge friendships uh, out of the experience as well. As well. Yeah, um, friendships, like I mentioned, but also also knowledge, you know, being aware of some things that get some of the bills that might get proposed on the state level, some of the book challenges that are happening, um, other things that pop up that are relevant to libraries, kind of kind of being one of the first people to, to know about that before it hits the mainstream, um, being able to get some extra details on that stuff beyond the headlines um, that we might hear or beyond like the emails. Um, that often end up being like a game of telephone. Like by the time you get the email, you don't know how much has been added or subtracted from your old story. So getting to get um, that information and then get it from multiple perspectives, be it Cindy's perspective or be it from the state library's perspective or whomever, can it kind of help? Um, well, I I know I know it informs me, so I can do a better job. So that I've got I've got more knowledge to make decisions and to voice opinions on things. That's great. Kind of like a master class, uh, you know. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And one of the real uh, benefits of having the, you know, the rotating presidents is that, you know, Ryan, this year is kind of learning the job, and then next year he'll be doing the job, and then the year after that he will be the mentor of 
the person that is elected in two years. So it's just a, a, like a cycle of, um, of you know, moving through those three positions. That's wonderful. Yeah, it's been very helpful. Um, yeah. Now, you know, Ryan, you mentioned uh, book challenges. Uh, what is ILA doing to help people, you know, address book challenges? Oh gosh, Cindy, can I kick that over to you? Sure. <laughs> um, so we have um, we have a group that we call the Partnership, and uh, <laughs> and it it started out as a conversation about school libraries, um, and now it is IL, ILA, uh, Illinois Heartland Library System, Rails, and the State Library, and uh, we are working together on. Um, launching something hopefully uh sometime this spring that will uh help us be more helpful to libraries facing challenges it's still in process but um we hope to have something to announce soon oh that's um, exciting yeah yeah it is and i think i think one of the big benefits of that is going to be we we know that the people who are challenging books um protesting programs running for district boards, they, they're they organized and they have a clear agenda. So mm -hmm. in order to successfully combat that, we also need to be organized um, and have a clear agenda. So, you know, currently there's all site, there's all sorts of like tools online through ALA or, or other resources mm -hmm. that a, a library who's in a tough spot can go to and find that information, but then it's still on you want to find it, implement it um you know process it all while you're under the stress so i think having this partnership like cindy spoke about will help us help all of us that when if, if we find ourselves in a situation like that one the burden is not totally on us to, to navigate it there, there's there's a team there and there's that that coordination there to help combat that coordination on the opposite side that that's an excellent point. And I know that um, whenever some new topic comes up or some new thing comes up, I always kind of have my rotation of sources I go to uh, to find more information or background information or an action plan or whatever. And, you know, it's uh, and I have to say, I go to ILA before I go to ALA, but, you know, just because it's like we're more focused on our mm -hmm. state, um, you know, and I also look at the state library's website uh, to, to figure out, you know, like what can, what extra information can you provide? What game plan do we have? How can we do this together mm -hmm. as a state? And I, I appreciate whatever kind of guidance you can offer us in these challenging times. Um, so this is very timely. Uh, there will be a legislative update in today's alert. Um, the first part will be about the state of the state. Uh, and the second half will be, um, and I'll put this in the link, um, uh, ALA has put out um, a message to library advocates to reach out to members of Congress to ask them to oppose censorship. Um, and uh, we we have seen a lot of um, very, what we would see as very dangerous legislation uh, introduced in many states. I'm sure you're aware of, of some of these situations. I know uh, Missouri has gone through a lot recently. Um, so those, those bills are starting to get introduced uh, in Congress and um, you know, they, they really won't be going anywhere, but we want to make sure that our legislators know that we oppose censorship and we support the freedom to read. So that will be in today's alert. And uh, there's the, the link if you wanna go ahead and respond immediately. Um, I know it will be appreciated so far. They have uh, 3,060 people. I think it should be more than that, yeah. so. <laughs> That's wonderful. Really and wonderful. we don't uh, we don't we have we have already seen some of these bills introduced in Illinois, but they're really not going to go anywhere. Um, and we're you know we'll keep an eye on them, but we don't anticipate them really moving along very far. 
That's great. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, Ryan, Cindy, do you have any uh, closing remarks or anything you would like to add to this conversation before we let you go and enjoy the rest of your day? <laughs> Well, thank you everybody for taking time out of your day. I'm um, I'm so happy to be here. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at robinson at ila.org. Um, and I'd be happy to check in with you. Thank you. Yeah, um, I'll echo that. You can reach out to me as well if you have questions about anything um, library related, ILA related. Um, if you are coming to Reaching Forward South, in April and you want, you know, recommendations on places to, to visit while you're here, I'm happy to supply those as well. Okay, thank you both very much for joining us this morning and sharing your, your knowledge and your insight and all of the great uh, links to all of the wonderful resources. Um, and I hope to see everyone at Reaching Forward South. Um, I'm looking forward to going to O'Fallon and, mm -hmm finding all the cool spots where all the cool <laughs> kids hang out. <laughs> so it'll be fun. Um, and I look forward to also attending the uh, legislative events that you're holding this year. I think mm -hmm. it's an interesting approach and and I, I'm really looking forward to it and, you know, hoping it'll be a great success. Mm -hmm. So again, thank you so very much. I appreciate you taking the time. We'll talk to you later. You can stick around if you want. You don't have to. Uh, we're going to just do some quick, uh, you know, updates on what's happening here at the system. I'm going to stick around. Yeah. Okay. I will too. <laughs> okay, great. All right. Um, I think the first person I'm going to call since um, we don't have, uh, unfortunately, a lot of our staff are not available uh, today. Uh, they're out doing important stuff. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to um, let Ellen talk about, uh, I'm going to let Ellen be the Leslie today. <laughs> <and> she can <laughs> kind of fill you in on what's going on at the administrative level. How about I act as Leslie and Ellen at the same time and I'll do administration and membership and then sounds perfect you could cross to me. me off the list. <laughs> um, this is a busy time for system staff. We are working on our operational plan for FY24. Um, Stacy Bushong, who is Leslie's administrative assistant, has a very intentional approach to that. So we've done updates on our 23 plan and then by March 10th, we will submit to Leslie um, our ideas for the operational plan for 2024. And then it goes to the board for several readings, um, but it's a good process because it goes through very specific stages. So hopefully we catch everything we need to catch and include everything that will impact our member services in the upcoming year. So lots of us are working on that. Um, we also are in the the phase in which we are seeking nominations for the board elections. Um, the original deadline was yesterday. It's been extended another week and we still need nominees. We need um, two public library trustees. We need a school representative and a special library representative. So if you have anyone, um, any public library trustee you'd like to reach out to and suggest that they be nominated or a school librarian or a special librarian. Um, we really need those people. And as Ryan said, um, it is a learning opportunity for someone who steps into that role. It You do come away richer, more knowledgeable, more connected. Um, I had a friend who was talking about stepping up for this kind of opportunities. And he said, if everybody would just take one turn we'd be in great shape. And, and that's how I look at that. So if you can bang the drums to get some board nominations out, we would be very grateful. Um, you know that we are looking at the potential for an automatic materials handler. Um, we're in the information finding stage of that. Um, the working group is doing field trips to libraries. They went to St. Louis County. Um, they're going to Champaign tomorrow and to, to Gate. Decatur Public the following week. Um, and 
the FAQ page for the automatic materials handler is up on our website now. So those are all things you can look at. And that's kind of what's going on from the um, administrative side. Many of you know because you've gotten nagging emails from me, or um, if there are any school libraries here from Leah Gregory, it is time um, for certification. If you're a veteran at certification, it's a real easy commitment of pulling a report from SHARE and then 10 minutes to certify. So please go in and do that so that I don't become your worst nightmare. <laughs> Um, thanks for, for giving the heads up about Reaching Forward South. I'll add one more event because Cindy just told me about them last week. And that are the those are the trustee training forums that will be done via Zoom this spring. Um, March, April, and May, correct, Cindy, I think? That is correct. I'll put okay. the link in for you. Thank you. The first one is about buildings. The second one has to do with finance. And the third has to do with the model board meeting. I have to, in, in true confession style, I will tell you that the one that's the model board meeting is just great. I could watch that on an annual basis, um, and it is such a good learning tool for library directors and trustees. Um, we all know that there, there are a lot of slippery slopes we could go down during a board meeting, and th this opportunity um, seeks to point those out and give us a heads up about oh, where we can where we can improve on conducting board meetings so and they're very affordable they're very very affordable so visit ILA's website Cindy put the link in there and take advantage of that and that's all I have Anna unless anybody has any questions okay I am not seeing any um I am going to um, go to Chase Cook next to talk about SHARE and any updates from the SHARE. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jason, I'm the SHARE Administrative Assistant at IHLS. I'm filling in for Cassandra today uh, to provide our SHARE update. Um, firstly, we'd like to thank everyone who participated in our recent membership vote after our SHARE annual members group meeting in January. Um, we've reached a quorum for the vote and all of the measures passed, which we're very happy about. Uh, the SHARE Executive Council accepted the results of the vote at their last meeting, and updates to the policies are being made on the SHARE website. Um, as a result of that vote also, we can now officially move forward with Asking Discovery, which is a project we've been working on for quite some time. We've started taking reservations and have had about 88 library sign up so far, which we're very excited about. Um, if you haven't had a chance to sign up and make your reservation yet, visit the SHARE website by February 25th to, or 28th sorry, to do so. Um, other than that, SHARE is also preparing for fiscal year 2024, and we've had some upcoming trainings and cat for cataloging and reports that we've got up on the IHLS website. So if you're interested, um, sign up for those today. And if anyone has any questions, they can reach out to Cassie. Um, that's all I have for you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chase. And I see that um, Ashley Stewart posted in, you know, since Ellen was talking about trustees, she had said that uh, they just started something kind of fun at her board meetings where when they do the roll call uh, at the opening of their meetings, uh, the trustees will say what book they're reading. So I think that's kind of fun. That's a great idea. Um, okay, I'm going to ask John Becker to give us an update on delivery. John, are you there? I sure am. Thank you. I appreciate it, Anna. So um, just really an update kind of mirrors what Ellen said. We're in the uh, budgeting and operational plan process for next year. Uh, I've been lucky enough to get on every route that we have except for one in Champaign. And it's really an eye opener in terms of the number of miles and the libraries that are out there um, that are really doing a lot of good work and almost acting just based on my experience in the non-for-profit um, sector as a uh, community center. And uh, I, I think, you know, unfortunately, that's the need of the communities in a lot of ways. Um, in terms of what we're looking at right now in operations are two major issues. Uh, the biggest one is vehicle replacement. Um, you know, we do a lot of uh, analytics in terms of our fleet. And on average, uh, we travel uh, 21,000 uh, miles a week. 
So a lot of miles get put on the vehicles, um, driver safety, uh, making sure that we're efficient in route planning. Uh, I, I think the operations team does an excellent job in that regards. Uh, I've always heard really good things when I'm out with the drivers, and it's a it's really a pleasure to meet uh, library staff and directors. Uh, van replacement is a challenge. Um, we are looking into what our fleet's going to look like uh, over the next few years. Uh, the other issue uh, that we're trying to address is, like a lot of things, unfortunately, uh, since the pandemic, the cost of items continue to go up and the quality uh, continues to drop. So uh, in the world of operations right now, it's about van and tubs and trying to find tubs that are better made and last longer um, is more of a challenge than most folks know because there's not a lot of uh, manufacturers and uh, a lot of the products that we've been using over the last year or two um, break down quickly. So those two things are, are pretty much our main focus in terms of operational planning and looking uh, at our budget for next year. It's a lot to consider. Um, as we replace vans, uh, I know I had a member ask me recently if we were thinking of going electric. <laughs> I don't even know if that's on the if that's feasible for us or if it's on any kind of ex and you know any kind of exploration of that is going on. I, I think it's a great question and a great comment. I would love to transition our entire fleet to electric. Um, I'm running our fuel bill is well over $300,000 a year. The problem that we have is the infrastructure is not where it needs to be for the EV charging stations. Um, if you look at where EV charging is available, say at our Carbondale hub, there's four in the county, but there's many counties around that uh, on our routes that there are no EV charging available. Um, and then you have to take into account if it's a high capacity, uh, quick charging station. Uh, I know in the next, you know, hopefully, depending on what resources you, you choose to believe, you know, there's, there's gas stations that are installing EV charge stations, um, and the infrastructure is very slowly rolling out. But, you know, my, I guess a quick answer is we're, we're a long way from that, unfortunately. Okay. Well, it's interesting. I know that Ashley Stewart, who's joined us today, um, you know, probably within the last year, talked about how she would like um, libraries to have that capability where uh, most of our libraries could be charging stations. That would be very cool and certainly move that effort along. So we'll see what happens. Uh, thank you, John, for your, your comments and insight. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. Um, I know that um, we don't have anyone from um, membership and communication, I mean, marketing and communications. Um, they are, were busy today and unable to attend. So I think I've covered all of our major groups. Um, I will open it up to um, any of our participants if they have anything they'd like to share. Um, about what's going on in their libraries or if they have any questions or comments in general that they would like to share. Now is your chance. Um, you can either unmute yourself or you can share it in the chat. It's your choice. And I'll give you a, a minute or two to do that. Hi, Hello. Ashley. Hi. So I just want to um, say that I'm thrilled to be nominated for the ILA vice president elect. And it kind of ties in smaller rural libraries and then having a voice and just the fact that, and I don't know if it's ever been done before, but um, for somebody to be serving a population of less than 5,000, uh, our operating budget is 209,000 a year. And the fact that I was nominated potentially to have this position is just unbelievable and I'm so thankful for it. So um, anyway, I just felt like I needed to say that. 
Um, side note, if anybody's in the area today, uh, State Representative uh, Katie Stewart's office will be at the library today with the Attorney General's office doing a senior webinar um, for senior fraud prevention. But uh, just trying to get those le legislators, um, just reminding them how much they love libraries. So um, I think that's it for me. But I just want to thank everybody again for the nominating committee. And um, yeah, that's really <laughs> it. <laughs> well, I think you deserve the nomination. You do so much in your community and for your library, Ashley. You're, you're a dynamo. It just hearing uh, everything that you're involved in makes me tired. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> no, no, but thank you. I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> yes. And I have to give Amy fair, fair play to Amy is phenomenal as well. And I, you know, I hate that I have to choose between the two of you. It's like, you know, maybe she can, one of you can do this year. One of you can do next year. Who knows? <laughs> I know. Have... I've had people already say, we're just going to do a coin toss just to see, just because, but no, Amy and I, uh, mad respect for each other and um again we're just thrilled to be nominated and um ila will be in good hands no matter what happens so. that's true and i'm just thrilled <laughs> to see both of your names up there i think it's wonderful and i can't think of two more deserving people and it and it you know it'll be nice to follow in, in ryan's footsteps so it's all exciting all good news from down here so thank you anyone else want to Pop in and say anything. Okay. Um, if no one has anything to add, uh, I want to thank you all again for joining us. Um, it's always nice to share knowledge with each other. Um, I'm going to. Um, let you have the rest of the day free. Usually these things last longer, so you've probably gained an hour in your day, and I hope you can use it in fun ways, not just getting work done, but, you know, enjoy yourself a little bit. Um, so thank you. Thanks again, and we will see you next month. Uh, we're having uh, Grant Halter from the uh, Rails library system and he's going to be talking about data collection and ways to use it and how to get information from your IPLAR and how to use that. It should be a really good program and I hope you can all attend. Thank you. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.